Music, Excel worksheet, scales, intervals, modes, and more, constructing the adjustable scale and chords table for the major scale part of the worksheet. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point if you so choose, possibly looking at this more from a music theory standpoint. We do suggest actually creating the tables either in Excel or possibly just with a pen and pencil, the construction of the tables, looking at the relationships between them is a useful exercise in my opinion. We're now going to, in essence, the heart of the worksheet, the part of the worksheet that's often most useful when we actually go to the guitar and practice with the guitar. If you do have access to this workbook, we have multiple tabs down below, the general idea being we have the example tab showing the end result where we're looking to get. We have the numbered worksheets, which are going to correspond to the video presentation numbering where we work on that part of the worksheet. Let's go back to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing this time. So the best part of the worksheet or the most functional part when we're practicing our playing is actually going to be the fretboard typically, which we're going to map out having the low E string on top, the top string on top. That means that we're going to have everything going the same way when you're playing guitar as compared with the worksheet, meaning we can read the fretboard from left to right, from top to bottom as we consider it from the vantage point of behind the guitar, which is where we typically sit. So, so that's going to be something that we do a little bit different here. If you want to flip it around the other way, you can. But I think this is a useful tool to me uh, to see the guitar. And when I look at other tablature, then I could still kind of flip it around in my mind. But especially if you're new to tablature and trying to map out notes on the guitar, I really think this is the best way to go. Then we're going to create a worksheet over here, which will be adjustable, allowing us to change the scale that uh, we are working in with our key up top. And this will give us the information for the relative positions. It'll give us whether it's going to build a major or minor chord from it. It'll give us the related modes that would be built from each position. Gives us the intervals uh, related to the first note of each position and it gives us the notes that would help us to construct the chords for each chord that's in our scale, not just the triad, but if we wanted to go all the way out uh, this way. So we'll talk more about that, how that works as we go. But the general idea is that we're going to use all the, a lot of the tables we put together before uh, for like V lookup tables to construct this. So this is where everything kind of gets put together from what we've done thus far. So let's do a quick recap of what we have done thus far. We listed out the musical alphabet, putting our sharps in flats represented with lowercase letters here. And then we also numbered it, which is useful for our referencing to with tool within Excel, but also something that I recommend learning to code switch between the letter and the number, which is why I'm going to be putting in the table the letter and the number, which if you don't want to do that, if you just want the letter, you can do that. But I think that's highly useful to memorize the number as an absolute number, not a relative number. Then we looked at the modes. I listed the modes from one to seven from the perspective, the vantage point of the major scale, as is the custom uh, in Western music. And that allows us to get, once again, an absolute numbering system. If I just label, for example, a mode, I say it's the fourth mode, I'm going to say it's the fourth mode in relation to the major scale, instead of saying it's the fourth mode related to like another, another scale, even though they're all related, but I'm going to compare everything to the major so I can get an absolute numbering system that could tell me what mode I'm looking at. We then listed the modes and we put a numbering system in here, not just the one, but also telling us with Roman numerals whether it will be constructing a major chord or a minor chord, which will also be thought of as a major mode if you could extend that, that thought process out 
a major mode or a minor mode, which will help us to determine which modes are major and which are minor modes. Then we thought about the intervals, remembering that there's only 12 notes. So if we had a ruler, we can measure every interval from the starting point, which means we have 12 interval names that we can list. And we usually try to use this interval concept in conjunction with the numbering system of each note within a seven note scale, which is where we get to our naming conventions. And we put the naming convention as well as the number in half steps of distance, similar to like the distance in a ruler. We then used the, the formula to create the scales. And we usually think of it first as the major scale, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. But if we imagine that repeating forever, and we just started from a different vantage point, that's all the modes are. If I started from the second point, it would be ha whole, half, whole, 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 half, whole, and so on. If I started from this point, it would be half, whole, whole. We used that information to then think about our relative positions per mode, meaning if I'm looking at, say, the Dorian mode, the first position of the Dorian mode is equivalent to the second position of the Ionian mode. And we mapped out this table to also show us the relation in terms of the modal relationships. In other words, the Dorian, first position for the Dorian, the first relative position for the Dorian has a minor chord construction. Beyond that, it has a, a Dorian mode. The second position has a minor chord construction. Beyond that, it's the Phrygian mode. And that Phrygian mode is the third position of the relative major scale. So we're going to use this table to construct what we're doing now. And then we put our intervals together by combining these tables down here to look at the total distances of each note in the scale, each relative position in the scale for each of the modes compared to the first note in the scale. And this is measured in half steps, our, our primary unit of measure, which we then converted to the traditional names made for them, which you have to basically just memorize what number of half steps those traditional names are compared to actual half steps, which we talked about last time and which we're actually gonna refer here with this number four showing in this example, the number of half steps to get to a major third. And the three represents the third relative position. So we're gonna use all those tables now to construct our worksheet over here, giving us the relative positions, the modes, the intervals, and then we will give the absolute number of the notes that will help us to construct chords. And then we'll use a VLOOKUP to, to convert those numbers into the actual notes. All right, so this is the heart of it. This is where, this is where everything's coming together now. Love it when a plan comes together. So let's make a skinny column first. I'm gonna copy this skinny column here by going to the Home tab, Clipboard, Format, Paint it, and then I'm gonna move over here. Doo -doo 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 and make a skinny AC that's the same skinniness. All right, so the first one I'm going to say, say I'm gonna have a numbering system here. Let's go one, two. It's gonna have seven notes in it because we're talking about major or Western scales typically having seven notes. So I'm gonna copy that down. There's our seven notes. I'm gonna double click uh, up top. Oop, I made it a little bit larger. And then I'm gonna double click here to make it as small as I can to still fit those numbers. And then uh, here, I'm gonna call this the major slash Ionian scale. So we usually call it a major scale, but in terms of modes, it's an Ionian mode. And then I'm gonna put here, the header is gonna be interval. That's where we're gonna put our intervals. And then I'm also gonna have a numbering system up top, which is gonna be one, two, and so on and so forth. And we're gonna bring this out also to seven. So we have our seven notes going this way, and then seven that way. And then we'll add to that in a second. I'm gonna select from 
here to here and make these a little bit skinnier, putting my cursor in between any of these two cells and then make it a little thinner so we can see everything that way. All right, so then we're gonna say, all right, let's put down our our modes first. So this is relative, actually let's, let's make this, let's format this a little nice. Let's make this a header format, selecting these items, home tab, font group, bucket drop down, black and white and then let's select these and and i'm going to do the same thing home tab font group black white okay so we're looking at then this number one and i want to pull in the related the related modal positions so remember the general idea with music if you're trying to play something of course you want to know what key you're in and then we also want to know uh, what chords I can play, usually first thinking in terms of major and minor. And usually the formula is major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. But I can go beyond that and think about the actual modes, major and minor mode. So the first one, of course, for the major scale will be the Ionian or major mode. So how can I find that? I can say, okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna go an X lookup. This equals the X lookup. And I'm gonna say, I wanna pick up that number one and then look at my, my uh, modes table. So I'm gonna say comma, where do I wanna look up and find that number one? I'm gonna scroll over to the left and say, we have our modes table over here. So here's our modes table. I wanna find the number one in this column. And that column, I don't want it to move when I copy it over. So I'm gonna say F4. And so now I've got a dollar sign before the start and the end of that column. I'm gonna say comma, what do I want to return? I'm gonna scroll back on over there. The return array is gonna be here. So you're gonna find that one. You're gonna to return to me the Ionian. So boom, boom, and I'm gonna say F4. So there it is, closing that up and then boom. So now I have the Ionian. Now I should be able to copy that down and these cells will not move and this cell will move. So it's gonna say, find the number two in that table and return the related mode, hopefully. That's, and let's put our cursor on the fill handle, drag it down, boom, and there we go. So now I'm gonna make this as small as I can. All right, so now, so what that means is we still, so now I can see this has the relative positions in the first scale, which I'm gonna first think of the C major scale, C major scale being a great scale to work with because it has, from an accounting standpoint, like an internal control, a double check, similar to a double entry accounting system because it has all, it doesn't have any sharps and flats. So if I get a sharp or a flat, I can see that one of my formulas are incorrect. That's why it's useful to, to use the C major and then hopefully if you have all your formulas right, we can convert that to any scale uh, from that point. So usually we're gonna say, here's the notes, relative positions. These are relative position one through seven of whatever scale, we're gonna say the C major. And then the first one is gonna be major. That's what this Roman numeral is telling us. It's, the, it's, it's related to the major scale. This is the major scale, number one, it's major. This is a minor, this would build a minor chord. We could see that by the lowercase Roman numeral. This would build a minor chord, this would build a major chord, this would build a major chord, this would build a minor chord, this would be a diminished chord. That's what most people will leave it at, but we're gonna go a step further and say, well, this is not only building a minor triad, which has a minor third rather than a major third, but also the, it would build a Dorian construction, a Dorian mode if you went beyond the third. That's what we're saying here. And when we get to things other than the major scale, this two is also telling us the relative position of the relative major scale, which of course is the same as this two here because we're looking at the major scale. But when we get into other modes, that's what that two is gonna represent. All right, now we're going to our intervals. Let me center these up top. I'm gonna to center these. Let's go across to here, go to the home tab alignment and center. So now we're on the intervals. We're gonna do another lookup tool to find the intervals. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to 
X look up again tab. We're going to be tying it to that relative one position. We're looking at the major or Ionian. So I'm going to say comma and I'm going to look for my table of the intervals by mode, which was over here and then down here. So here we have it. That's going to be our fancy table we had down here. We're looking at the Ionian. So I want to say this is the array I want to look up. It's going to find that number one. Here's my formula up top. I want to say F4 on the keyboard, making that absolute. And then I'm going to say comma and then go back to my table over there and go do -do 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 and go down to my table. It's down here. Do -do 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 -do. And then we're going to pick up this bit. So I want the Ionian. I'm on the Ionian or major. So th if you give me that one, it's going to return then this P1 and I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard making it absolute so I can copy it down and enter. There we have it. If I double click on this, this cell is going to copy down. The table is going to remain the same. So it's going to find the two and return the related interval for the two. So I'm going to copy that down. Boom. All right. So there we have it. So that means that the whatever the one is, which is I'm going to start with a C is going to be at a zero distance away or a perfect firth for a major or Ionian scale for the second uh, note in uh, in the uh, scale. It's going to be a major second away. The third note is going to be a major third away. The fourth note is going to be a perfect fourth or five. It's a five note away perfect fourth. The next one, the fifth will be a seven note away perfect fifth. The sixth will be a nine note away per a uh, major sixth and then the seventh relative position seven or seventh will be the 11 note away major seventh all right so then so those are going to be the intervals now this first letter here is going to be our our key so meaning i'm going to say that we're in the key of c i'm going to represent that though with a number so i'm going to start with the number these are our notes a, A sharp or B flat, B, there's our C. The number, absolute number, representing a C is a four. So I'm gonna pick up the four. I'm gonna make that, I could just type in a four here and that would work as well if I know the four is what I wanna focus on. I'm gonna make that blue because that's the point that we can change. I'm gonna make it this blue in our key. So that's gonna, once I change that note, it's gonna change my entire uh, uh, key. So then let's put, let's make this black and white. This is kind of part of our header or side bit home tab. Let's go font group. I'm going to make that black and white. And then I'm going to put brackets around this part. So we'll select this and go home tab font group and put brackets around that. Okay. And then I'm going to just make up our scale, right? So if that's a four is a C, how do I know what the next note is? Well, that's going to be in accordance with our formula, which is our formula to construct the scale is for a major scale, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So if the four, if this is the fourth note in the musical alphabet, how do I get to the next note? Well, it's going to be equal to that four plus the formula says to get from the first one to the second, it's two notes away. And remember that two, you can kind of think of it as like in between these two, right? Because I've got to go two to get to the next one. So the next one's going to be a six. A six, if we look at our master formula over here, we want to be able to code switch between six being a D. Now, again, we will make another worksheet, which will have a six and a D, but we're, we're and and that's one reason we're using numbers here is just for the coding of it so i can then use a v lookup to f or a, an x lookup to then switch this but i do think it's if you can memorize the table the absolute notes by number it's actually way cleaner to be able to do that uh because because then you then this table will be a lot smaller as we will see when we when we construct this now there's a problem that if i copy this all the way down, I might get numbers that are over 12. There's only 12 notes in the musical alphabet. So like this 13 is wrong. What should it be? Well, there's only 12 notes and then we go around again. 
So that should really be a 1, right? It should be 13 minus 12, because there's only 12 notes, which would be 1. This would be 15 minus 12, right? So which would be 3, right? A 3. So, so what I can do, I need a formula. Instead of me going in and fixing that, I want a formula that does it for me. I can use a logic formula that looks intimidating, but the logic behind it's pretty basic. So I'm going to say this equals if brackets, and then I'm going to put another brackets, and I'm going to say I want to take that number 4 plus the formula, which is we, we accept a priori. That's just the formula is what it is put brackets around that it's a two for the next to get to the next step and then I'm going to copy this bit right here I'm going to copy it because it's going to repeat so if that plus that is less than 13 meaning it could go up to 12 but not over 12 less than 13 then comma what do we want to do then just take then just add those I just paste it here and here just paste that in the same comma but what if it's not true what if it's greater than 13? Well, then still do the same thing. Add those two, but it's going to be greater than 13. It'll be 13 or greater. Therefore, subtract 12. And it, that 13 that we saw minus 12 will go back to 1, which means it's going around the horn back to, back to 1. So enter, and then it closes it up, hopefully. So I get that same 6, and I can copy that down now. And it should take the relative position. So this one is taking the one above it. So we're starting on a 6, which is a D. And then I'm adding to it the next bit, which is a 2, which is getting me down to here. This one's going to be taking the 8 that's above it. And it's adding the 1 to go down to the next one. This is going to be taking the 9 above it. 9, 10, 11, adding the 2. This one's taking the 11 above it adding 2, which takes us to 13, which is over 12. Therefore, we also subtracted 12, getting us back to 1, right? And then this one is repeating the process here. All right, we can also do that same formula going this way. So remember, when I looked at this, when I built this worksheet, we have the same formula going down, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. If I look at the Ionian going this way, same formula. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So now I'm just going to do the same thing going to the right. So I'm going to say this is going to be equals. And that's why I say that, see this Ionian is, is, we're in the Ionian going this way, but it's also going Ionian this way, out this way, right? So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to if brackets, brackets, this and then plus then this one and then I'm going to close that up and then I'm going to copy I'm going to go back on over and I'm going to copy this bit if that plus that is less than 13 then just do that plus that but if it's not comma then still do that plus that but it's going to be greater than 13 so subtract 12 because there's only 12 notes in the musical alphabet closing up the brackets and uh, enter so there's the six and so then i should be able to copy this to the right do, 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 out to seven boom and so there we so there we have it and so now this so this one is that this one is taking that six and now it's saying it's that six plus two right and then this one is taking that 8 and then it's taking that 8 plus 1 and so on and so forth this one see how we're just mirroring the same thing 6 8 9 11 1 3 6 8 9 11 1 3 same formula but we're going down and then across okay so then with with the dorian we could do we can do the same thing but before we do that let's actually check this and i want to be able to check that i don't have any sharps and flats which might be easier to do with letters than with numbers. So let's copy this whole thing. I'm going to copy this whole thing right now and say, let's copy this and put it right underneath control V. So we have the same kind of thing, but then I'm going to reference the cells above it. So I'm going to say, this is going to be equal to this one. 
So instead of instead of me using the lookup, which is coming up with the same thing, I'm just going to refer to the one above it. So these two tables are connected. I'm going to do the same thing here. This refers to the one above it and boom. And then I'm going to copy that down. And so that's the same. And then I'm going to delete this stuff. I'm going to remove this blue because this is not going to be my key. Now this the key is up top. I want to switch it in numbers, not with the letter. And then down here, I'm going to use a V lookup to pull in the letter and the numbers down below. So that's going to look like it's an X lookup now. So this is an X lookup tab. And I want to take this number four and return to us the related letter and number, which is a C. So I'm going to take that and I want to say comma. Where do you want to look that up? We want to go all the way to the left and we're going to say find it in our numerical musical alphabet one through 12 and then F4 to make that absolute so that now we have the absolute references of that range comma and then return to us back on over this one giving us both the the, the absolute number and letter and then F4 making it absolute so I can then copy it down and across and okay so there we have it so it's a C just like we expected if I copy that down so now we've got what we expect in the C major scale, no sharps and flats. This is our double check, our internal control. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. I can do the same thing this way, copying it this way. And it returns to me what we would expect. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. There's no sharps and flats. Therefore, I'm fairly confident that we're in balance in a similar fashion as if I was doing a a balance sheet and the assets equal the liabilities plus equity or the debits equal the credits. We've got our internal control. Okay. Now let's actually copy this down to the rest of the worksheet as well, which we haven't populated yet. So we get to a bunch of NAs because here's kind of the interesting part. Like I could say, okay, what am I going to do now? Because I could copy this across this way like that or control Z take these and copy them down this way, right? Does it matter? Can I do both? Let's check it out. So if I was to take these here and say, let's fill handle and copy them across this way. And I check this formula. Notice what I get down here. I got no sharps and flats. So D E F G A B C. So E F G A B C D. F, G, A, B, C. So that looks like it's correct. If I was to take a look at it, what did it do? Of course, we're taking the, in this case, we're taking the one above it and then taking the two, this position here. And there we have it. If I go down here, it's taking then this two and the one above it, right? So that's a, if we copy it across that way. Let me let me do it the other way and say, okay, well, what if I delete this and say, I'm going to copy these down like this. Does that still work? Well, let's see. I got C, D, E, F, G. That one was already E, F, G, A, B, C, D, right? F, G, A, B, C, D. Uh, e, right? So I don't see any sharps and flats. So it looks like that is working as well. If I was to look here, this is now picking up the one to the left. And then that two, and then this one is picking up the one to the left, and then the next one. So so see how because there's symmetry in our table, we can copy it across basically either way. So that gives us kind of our, our internal control, our double check that everything looks like it's populating the way it should. Now, if we consider this table, why is this useful to us? Well, it's given us the relative position. It's given us major chords and minor chords. Now, what does it mean for something to be a major and minor chord? It means that if I was to build a chord, what we do is we take every other note in the scale. So I can say, this is the one, the three, and the five, that's gonna be the normal way that we construct a, a triad, which is the major form of chord. I can construct that this way because I also have the Ionian going this way. The one, the three, the five. And I know it's a major because the three 
happens to be four notes away, a major third away, which we can see here, major third, it's a four note away, major third. That E is a major third away. Now, oftentimes when we construct chords, we don't look at the two because we're skipping the two. We're taking every other note when we construct the chords, but that means we only go up to seven notes and we've skipped these three notes. Does that mean we can't make a chord with the two, the four, and the six? No, it doesn't. It, but what we end up doing is we typically call them, and we, we keep on going from a seven to a nine to an 11 to a 12 is what we end up doing. So I'm gonna extend this table out by saying, let's format paint this out here. And then I'm going to make all of these the same size, selecting all these, making them the same size. This 9 is equivalent to the 2. This 11 is equivalent to the 4. This, uh, this should be 13, not 12, 13. And this 13 is equivalent to the 6, right? So we don't have any even numbers when we're taking every other note. So what we do is we go up beyond seven and say, well, now it's the nine, 11, and 13. Well, where did you get those? There's only seven notes. Well, they're the same as, in essence, the two, at least harmonically the same, you know, you could, you know, the two, the four, and the six. Those are the even notes that we're gonna now call the nine, 11, and 13, which you could think about as playing in a higher octave possibly, but they're the same notes, you know, is the general idea. So I can copy that then down this way. And then let's copy this table over this way. Uh, actually, I have to say this is equivalent to the nine, let's say, and copy that over. And then I can copy this table over like that. So now these are repetitive. So I can then maybe color code that. I'll make this two home tab uh, let's go to the, the uh, font group and make that one like yellow. That two is equivalent to this nine. And this four, let's make that green. That four is equivalent to this 11. And this six, let's make that blue, is equivalent to this 13. So from a chord construction standpoint, I might just remove the two, the four, the six, and just leave the nine, 11, and 13. So when I'm building chords, I might say, let's select column AI, right click and hide it. Let's select column, uh, hold on a sec, control Z, not that one, the two. Let's select column AH, right click and hide it. Let's select column AJ, the four, right click and hide it. And let's select column AL, right click and hide it. So now what we have is just the building blocks that are usually used to construct the chords. So the one chord then is usually going to have the one, the three, the five, and then you can add the seven and then the nine. What is the nine? It's the two that we hid right here. So that means that that's why I see this first one not simply as constructing the major scale, which is the one, three, five, but also we can unhide these and see that really this, is, this whole thing is just the Ionian mode again. This whole bit down here is going to be the Dorian mode. It's got the one, three, five. The third, you can see if I compare it not to the C, but rather to this D, which means that the, all these intervals are comparing the C, right? Now, when I take this two, if I construct a chord from it, I take the one, three, five of that, uh, of this scale, which I get the same intervals as I would if it was a minor scale for the one, three, five, meaning I get a minor third, which you can see numerically, which is the nine, minus the six, six, seven, eight, nine, three notes away instead of four notes away as the one up top. That's why it's minor indicated by the lowercase Roman numeral here. But if I go beyond that, I get the fit, I get the seventh and then the ninth. 
and then I could go on beyond that, I'm sorry, the 7th, and then I get beyond that to the 9th, the 11th, and the 13th. Well, what are those three? Those are just simply the 2, the 4, and the 6, right? So if I, so I can see the Dorian scale. What is the Dorian scale? I can unhide these and see it's 1, 2, 3, up to 7, or I can say it's the 1, and then the 2 is equivalent to the 9, and then the 3, and then the 4 is equivalent to the 11, and then the 5, and then uh the, the you know the six is equivalent to the 13 and then the seven so the reason we have it formatted this way is for chord construction because we pick every other note but again you can see it as the same notes are here of course as the c scale because we're just looking at all of the related modes that have the same notes in it it's just a difference in the relative positions here we're measuring from the second note as as though it's the first now, which means we're looking from the perspective of a Dorian scale, which has a minor chord to start with because it's a minor mode, which is we can see over here with the lowercase Roman numeral. So that's that's going to be the idea of our uh, worksheets. So I think that so let's make this green up top. I've made this green. Duh, 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 duh. I'll make this that green. Or do I want it this green? I don't know. That maybe that green, because that's going to be our major. That's going to be our core scale. So let's unhide this. I'm going to go from A G to A M. Right click and unhide. So now these scales are what we can then use. I can I can map these. Use these to map out to our fretboard, which we will then construct on the right hand side so that I can map out the whole scale and I can work on my scalings. I can map out the, the chords, the one, three, five onto my fretboard and work on the chords. And then I can add the seventh, you know, the ninth, the 11th and the 13th to my chords and try to work on those intervals. I can see the intervals related to, you know, the major scale and so on and so forth. So next time we're going to continue on this, but but do the related modes. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the related modes, the Dorian, which I'll which I'll automatically link, which will be starting from the second. So now we'll start with the Dorian, which will have the one, which is equivalent to the two of the major. And then we'll look at all of the intervals related to the Dorian and then use that to map out down here in a similar fashion to the Dorian scale. Also noting that we can change this key so that instead of looking at the related one, I can look at the complementary mode by changing this from a, to a four, which means I would look at the C Dorian, which would be the complementary mode rather than the D Dorian, which would be the related mode. I hope I'm getting that terminology right. Uh, but that's gonna be, that's, so that's what we'll do next time.